Fantastic. I'm going to be covering um, how to stream rhythm games on Twitch. The first thing I'll cover, uh, this is going to be like specific to the pad that I have, which is an S a Step Maniacs pad, or you might have heard it called SMX. Uh, there are other pad options out there. You can do LTEC. Um, you can get uh, like a DDR pad, an ITG pad, and kind of convert it for use with like a PC. Um, but there are a bunch of pads out there. The, the one that I'm most familiar with is going to be my SMX pad, which is right next to me over here. Um, so yeah. So SMX pad. It's basically uh, like a dance game pad. Um, it's uh, new hardware uh, made by Kyle Ward uh, and his team um, uh, from SMX, Stepping EX. Um, plug and play controller super easy to set up um, uh, they the only thing I had to do was attach the bar to the pad itself um, which honestly was not bad it was pretty easy um, and the reason for that is because I had uh, my fiance and Demir put it together for me um, you, I think you need just like a very large wrench to put it together um, the computer that you use it with PC um, so Windows or um, a Mac, the moment you plug it in, the computer will recognize it as a controller. Um, and what's really cool with Step Mania, um, I don't believe I had to, I could be forgetting, but I don't believe I had to map anything. It, it just kind of worked. I think I had to, the thing I had to do was remap um, within Step Mania um, the scroll wheel for um, Hi Mrs. Figgies. The scroll wheel for like navigating the menu. I think that's the only thing I had to do. I, I know there are some other people slash like LLCs that are creating like either their own machines or um, the what is it uh, pads themselves. But um, I really can't speak to either of those options. So I'm gonna stick with what I know, which is Step Maniacs video. So most people who, who want to stream rhythm games. Um, want to have video to capture uh, their movements on the pad. Um, you do not need anything fancy for this. You do not need a DSLR. You don't need a video camera. I use a webcam. That's what I use. Um, it works super well. Captures exactly what I need it to capture. There's actually software built into the webcam um, to, so you can kind of adjust like the white balance and the exposure and the focus and stuff like that. Obviously not as advanced as a real DSLR camera. Um, I do photography, so I know how awesome DSLR cameras are, but you don't need one for streaming rhythm games. I use this a Logitech C920. It's a USB camera, so again, it's another uh, product that you can get that's just plug and play. If you're streaming on Twitch, Facebook, whatever it is, don't stream at 1080p. I was going to dive into that with the software, but um, you do not need to stream at 1080p. There's one very minimal difference for people who are watching you. Two, you need to have very high bitrate to support that. Uh, bitrate speaks to your um, your internet and how much it's like pushing out. Uh, and if you str if you try to stream in 1080p, you're pushing out a lot of like dense video, and that's just too much. And um, Twitch will actually so Twitch kind of saves 1080p for partners, so it kind of prioritizes the partners who stream in 1080p, so they get the best um, sort of like internet service, not internet service, but like the best like the best road on Twitch. Um, they don't have any blockers for them to stream at 1080p. Neither do we as affiliates or um, non-affiliates. However, Twitch will um, limit uh, your video if you're streaming at 1080p and th they'll compress it on their end when they're pushing it out to viewers, which ruins your video quality. So if you're going to stream, just stream in 720p uh, and make, you know, then manage your bitrate and everything else from there and you'll have really good video quality. I do see some people in the rhythm game community who stream in 1080p and I'm just like, you should not be doing that. And I actually learned this from Mrs. Figgy, so thank you very much, but um, but yeah, it Twitch will compress that video before it sends it out to viewers, especially if that viewer who's watching
does not have good internet or cellular service. I don't know how to show you without you seeing double of me, but I guess that's what I'm going to do. It's going to look like a lot. Don't get overwhelmed by this. This is what I use to stream. This is uh, Streamlabs OBS. Um, so basically, with the video camera I have, I have it in a folder called Face. So I have my webcam. I have an overlay. Or actually, sorry, I have two overlays. So anyway, I want my face cam. So I'm going to double click that. It's going to bring up the screen. Hopefully you can see that pretty well. Um, so to here is where you like pick the device. Here is where you deactivate. I don't want to do that. But here, if you hit configure video, which is what I do every time I stream, it opens up the software or the properties for the camera that's right up here. Video, uh, proc, amp, all these are options that you have with your Logitech C920. Um, it's a lot, lot of, lot of good stuff. So the only things that I touch are white balance and under camera control, I mess with zoom, focus, and exposure. So audio, this is a fun one. Um, I think audio was actually much harder for me to set up than video is. Um, Video is very similar to photography, which I'm really, uh, I do all the time. So figuring that out um, took some time because of financial reasons. But, um, but yeah, I'm not familiar with setting up audio. So I don't want to recommend a specific product because everyone's audio setup is going to be different. Um, but what I will say is that I personally used a Blue Yeti for the longest time. Um, Blue Yeti, like, um, yeah, I think it's just called Blue Yeti microphone. Um, Blue Yeti is really awesome, has four audio settings. Um, I can actually bring it over. Hold on. Blue Yeti microphone. So on one side, you have the mute button right here. And then on this side, you have a volume button. This volume button is for when you are listening to the mic. It does not affect what is being output. On the other side, you have two knobs. One's called gain and one is called pattern. Gain basically means how sensitive the microphone is. And then the pattern, you have um, four audio patterns you can choose from. I'm not going to lie to you, I don't actually remember all of the names, but I do know like sort of what they do. Um, the one that I would use um, for streaming was actually the, s the full circle. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, so four audio patterns. The first one is kind of like a Venn diagram looking thing. Um, I don't know what audio direction pattern that one is. Um, but the circle, which is the second one, captures sound surrounding the microphone. So that's what I would use for streaming uh, because it just captured the sound in the room. The third one over is like an upside down heart. That one's called cardoid, I believe. Uh, this one will only capture audio from this side of it. So it's really good if you are using this to stream. You can kind of make it so that your keyboard clicks aren't heard by the microphone because they're on the other side of the mic. And then the other one you can use is this, um, it looks like the number eight. So it'll, it's, it's really good for um, when you're talking to someone or in recording that. You can put someone, uh, both of you on like either side of the mic and the mic will pick up sound from this side and then from this side. Um, that one's actually a good one for streaming rhythm games as well, if that's how you want to capture your audio. Capturing audio with streaming is a little difficult because um, there's a delay. So audio travels faster than video because audio is a smaller, does not take up much size, whereas video it takes up a lot of size. So it's just quicker to send out audio than it is video. So there's always going to be a little bit of a delay, so a little bit of like a desync between audio and, and video. Um, the way to compensate for that is um, by putting a delay on your audio. Um, again, this is going to be personal to everyone's setup, but. Basically, the best way to do this, depending, so there are two ways to do it. So one is if you are just recording video from your microphone, um, keep in mind if you do this method, the video, the, rather the audio quality will not sound as good as it would be if you were recording the audio directly. But if you do do that, you don't have any sync issues. 
Um, you just have to worry about syncing your overall audio to the video, uh, rather to the software. Um, the, the second method, which is what I do, which is I record two separate lines of audio. I record the first line is um, desktop audio. So I just record it straight from the desktop. That way you guys get the best audio quality. Um, the problem that that introduces uh, is with if you're using like a Blue Yeti microphone or a microphone to pick up your voice, it'll pick up the music in the room and there'll be a noticeable uh, like delay between the desktop audio and the audio that the microphone that you're using for your voice just happens to pick up. So the way to fix that, to, to get around it, is to get a microphone similar to what I have, which is designed to only pick up audio that's directly in front of it. Blue Yeti, honestly, is probably the simplest way to record um, your audio and um, like your voice and everything. Um, honestly, setting up the two different tracks is like the desktop audio and then a separate track for my voice is awesome sounds great but it's a lot of money so with this microphone it's actually a powered mic um, and it's running through an audio interface which you need for an XLR mic my personal audio setup is an XLR mic um, that's wired to an audio interface that is USB-C powered um, connected to my PC regardless of whichever audio method you use to capture your voice in the game audio um, there is uh, one thing you will have to deal with, and that is syncing the audio to your steps. Anyway, the best way to sync your audio is going to be um, playing a song, whether it's Pump It Up, ITG, DDR, playing a very, very easy song, like a two or a three. Don't have to play the whole song, just like a few steps so you get like a good sample size. And you'll want to... Um, just step very pronouncedly, if that's a word, um, prominently, I don't know how to say that, but anyway, you, you record that, record like the beginning of a song, end the recording, and then watch back that recording. Um, pause it at each like note that's hit, and your goal basically is to see if the, if the audio needs to be delayed, if the video needs to be delayed, because again, it's going to be dependent on your personal setup, but that is how you'll sync um, audio, if that makes sense. Please, please feel free to ask questions, because I know it's a little bit confusing. Here, I'll show you. I'll show you my OBS again. Here we are. So, in Streamlabs OBS, under Mixer, which is right here, you did the little gear shift. This would be what's brought up. Um, so you have your desktop audio, which is basically the game audio, and then um, you, where's my voice? There it is, you have my voice. So for me, this section, sync offset, this is where you would delay the audio. So for me, I found that 150 um, milliseconds is what works best for my setup. Yours, your number might be smaller, your number might be larger you have to do some testing to figure that out. Let's go through OBS so I can kind of show you guys the breakdown of that. So OBS is free software that you can use to uh, stream. What I'm gonna do is create a new scene to just kind of walk you guys through how I set up um, a dance game like scene. But over here, in this section is what is most important. On th this first box, you have scene um, scenes that you can create and use. Uh, this middle area are your sources. So this is where you'll input um, options to um, create a scene. And over here is your mixer, so your audio uh, settings. So again, for dance games, I have desktop audio being captured. I usually have this slider down about negative 14, negative 16. Um, <coughs> because if I have it at full, like this, um, the audio is constantly in the red and it's gonna sound staticky, it's gonna sound bad. So I, I make sure that it stays within the green, maybe barely touching the yellow area. So, all I've done is added my camera, 
uh, display capture and the mic. Um, I'll show you what I did. So I hit the little plus sign. When you hit the plus sign, it brings you to all the sources that you can add. Um, you can do image, browser, image, slideshow, display capture. There's a lot of options there. The ones that you will use will be audio input, game capture, or display capture. And I'll talk about the differences there. Um, and then video capture device. You want audio input because this is an input device being fed into um, the PC. So um, once I hit audio input, you hit you go over here to add source. Um, in your new setup, these options will not be here. So it'll have you. Um, it'll there should be a button here saying add a new source. You'll name your source and then you'll add it. And then it'll pop up here. You do the same for the video. Um, so you go to the plus sign, hit video capture, add source, new source, and then find it in the list of available devices. So when you're capturing your game, you will um, do one of two things, either game capture or display capture. So it's really cool is the PC recognizes Stepmania as um, a game or rather not add Step Mania, but the moment you open Step Mania, you go here to the plus sign, you can hit game capture, add source. Um, again, it'll pull up as an option. You'll hit add. So anyway, this is where you'll get started just kind of organizing your scene. Um, you can actually basically just start streaming with, with just these four things. You don't need like all the stuff that I have, but Anyway, a lot of people like making this as large as possible and then you would move your video camera to like wherever you want. Maybe you want it over here and the game over here. Uh, what I would recommend is whatever uh, direction you tend to be facing with um, when you play, <laughs> um, you'll want to adjust your video cam there. It just makes sense to the audience. Uh, for example, if I'm playing a chart, and I'm, I'm, I'm looking in this direction and I'm playing this way, it looks really silly. But if I'm facing this way, this setup looks great because it looks like I'm actually looking at the gameplay screen. Another thing to note is to imagine these as layers. So my face cam is the top layer. Game capture is the second layer. Um, display capture is right under that. And then my audio is at the bottom. You can do fun stuff like putting in overlays um, so you can create your own. You can have people in the community make them for you or you can buy them. What you'll do is you'll import an image, add a source. I already have one here, which is my face overlay. Um, so it's just a PNG file, so a photo. I'm going to resize it and put it over my video camera and voila, now I'm fancy. Let me go to my actual dance game setup so that I can show you what I have here. So I have it set up so that um, you have the game up above, you have the chat in the middle, and then the far right is going to be my actual video camera on me. That's I covered everything like from video to audio to setting up your stream. Please, if you have any questions, feel free to put them in chat. You can message me privately here on Twitch, here on my Discord, on Twitter, wherever you want. If you think of something after the fact, feel free to reach out to me. Hope this was helpful. I'm around. I might. What I might do over time is like make more like concentrated tutorials. Maybe like just record it on my own time. Oh, you guys are welcome. This is super fun. I.